on Monday, we tragically lost a wonderful person and uh, a great friend of ours. Lots has been said about Danny Frawley and the impact he had on footy and on Victoria and Australia and people and his family and uh, and all of the above is uh, 100% warranted because he was a, a beauty spud. But what we thought we'd do is get back together a group of people that worked with him for 10 years and revisit Gary Lyon, who's been good enough to come over from SEN and we've, we've put the team back together, if you like. And, Gaz, for the next couple of hours, I think it's really important that we remember what an extraordinary broadcaster Danny Frawley was on top of everything else he was great at. It is, Jim, and it's great to be here. And I can't wait for Damo and, and uh, Bristol to get in. You and I... We all struggle with this, obviously, in our own different ways. And I was battling big time on Tuesday, and you rang. And I was in the car driving, and we spoke for 30 minutes and laughed and reminisced. And Mm. I got off the phone feeling better. So I think that's what we needed to do and help everyone else who's struggling along as well. And the best way to do that is remember the great times with the great man, and a lot of that happened here. It did. So... I hope you can spend the next couple of hours with us appreciating what a genius Danny Frawley was behind the microphone. <laughs> I, I can't do everything. I can't produce the show, oh, um, add a bit of humour to the show, and actually a few insights into footy. I saw a strange man wandering around the oh. back of the uh, media centre here in oh. a uh, St Kilda outfit, Spud. Oh, no. Uh, had all the St Kilda gear on. Oh, there, but look at Spud. Oh, what he thinks he is. Oh, no. Uh, look at him. Spud's just oh, uh, tight in the full uh, St he's Kilda. He's the Saints oh. polo on the way to the merchandise shop. Look at him. Strutting around like a peacock. Yes. <laughs> but the wolf pack, what are they saying? Oh, well, they reckon uh, Brian and I are ego stroking between us, <laughs> so that won't happen anymore, BT. What have you asked for my jumper, Brian, when I played on you? Because you were too busy on your knees crying, Spud. <laughs> I, I played on you in, in your first game, Spud, and you, I, I brought you to tears. You kicked seven. Yeah. Yeah, but what happened the next time, Brian? I can't remember. Brownlow votes. Who got the three? <laughs> Looking at us now. How you going? Yeah, <laughs> we're in here. You're out there. Because we we're number one. The Saturday Rub pays tribute to our mate, Danny Frawley. Ah, uh, Gaz, time to get these two involved. Over the course of that amazing decade of broadcasting, we had some wonderful people roll through the Saturday rub, including the great Brian Taylor and the equally great Damien Barrett. Welcome to you two. Morning, gents, or afternoon, whatever it is. Yeah, BT, Jim, Gaz. Uh, look, we just said, Gaz and I, off the top, that um, you know the thing that happened Monday is uh, impossible to fathom. But we just could not allow uh, enough time to pass, Gaz, before we thought we'd just uh, shine a light on what an incredibly talented and entertaining broadcaster this bloke was. Yep, and we're not going any further. I refuse to do this until we've put 50 in... For the quaddy. Quaddy. Actually, yes. Get it out. Yes. That's quaddy that yeah. I watched. Ryan, yeah. I watched for years. You, never, you guys never win you, one And quaddy. you never put your money in, so get because your 50 you out. you never won. Warrior, you're putting it on. Well, you know what put it on? The Fly problem on. we always had with that quaddy was we would actually get a result, but because they were all free bets, we then had to reinvest and it never came back. No. And, 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 and Spud always had the wrong the, tips. Exactly. He had the wrong tips until the race was run. Yeah. And then he go, why didn't you, why didn't you put that in? I, I had that. And he said, no, you didn't, Spud. And, and this is how it used to go. Jim and Brian would go, and the ball's on, hard forward, hard forward. And then Spud would disappear. He would. And he'd come back <laughs> in and he'd go, got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. One of mine. One of mine. That's it. And the, only, uh, the footy would just roll on. The only one I can ever remember him getting was the was the one on that famous Toyota bus tour. Yes. And um, he he got that one. He hounded us for seven days in a row to I think it was a hundred bucks each we had to put in. Jeez. And uh, he'd lost a lot of several thousand dollars over the days leading up. <laughs> and finally he nailed one with I think it was a fifty to one chance to get up in the last. Well, what I know about it, Brian, and no one knows less about punting than me, is that Spud used to come in every Saturday and go. Right, 1,200 in the kitty. <laughs> and then the next week, 1,800 in the kitty. <laughs> and by the end of the season, it'd be up in the four or five grands. I'd say, Spud, go and withdraw the lot and give me 1,000 yeah. of it. I want to see it in my hand. <laughs> Over a decade, I never saw a cent. Uh, no one did. And he'd, he'd tip you something on the Friday night for race three at, at Flemington, and uh, that'd be number three. So that would be the one you'd back. And then number four would win. And he goes, did you get on? And <laughs> oh, so he's changed his tips in the space of 12 hours. No, no. And, and, and uh, this from a... 
I love this from the listener's point of view. They'd be hearing the boys call the race and you wouldn't hear Spud and then you'd just hear... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy go. We're out. We're Sounds out. like we're out. First mm. leg. <laughs> First leg gone. <laughs> Long afternoon. Oh. Well, and uh, the, we came out, Gaz. We, he was coaching Richmond. And actually, my brother's got to take a fair bit of credit for this because he was the CEO of Richmond at the time. And he said to me, you should get this bloke to do special comments for you. He'd be brilliant. Mm. And I went, Spud, <laughs> because at that stage he was coaching Richmond wow. and it wasn't going particularly well. <laughs> and he was as flat as a biscuit, and it, wasn't he? He was nothing like the bloke. And, he, and he had trouble talking. He did. And there were all those emotional shots yes. where you could see him standing up hammering people and wanting to smash people. And That's thought, it. We were going to bring that to the box, <laughs> aren't we? But he came into that final series and it, he just took to it like a hand in a glove. I don't think I was with you, uh, boys. You were still over at the AMs? I was at the over 50. You were. <laughs> uh, dominating. You were, um, we, we used to look over at you and you were the I saddest. I was having fun, Jim. No, you weren't. I was having you fun. Were, <laughs> you were. <laughs> oh, it was a but sad box. He, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. It was when you were there too, but but Yes. Because <laughs> yes. you oh, left us for a while. Oh, hello. You left us for a while. I left, you kept uh, looking in through the glass oh, panels, oh, pining to come hello. back with us I said to Spud. I said to Spud, what should I do? He said, is it about money? I said, Yes, he said go. Oh. <laughs> Brian's just opened a door he doesn't want to walk through. Sage advice there from Spud. But he wandered in that final series, and I reckon he was nice and serious for about a minute. And then he realised that wasn't going to wash. None of us could understand anything he was saying. So he then took to the theatre of Triple M footy brilliantly. I think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was the force that had to deal with oh, yeah, early That days. is true. It and is that's true. A, a, more, two more different people on the on the uh, mental scale. That's it. But in terms of intelligence, I've never seen. So I think he had him bluff, force. Well, no, as he did all of us. But at one stage, Spud, uh, describing a bit of play, I'll never ever forget it, uh, said that, uh, you know, <laughs> let, let's say it was Vandenberg. He said, uh, Vandenberg had him stimmied. <laughs> <laughs> and force as, as only he could spent the next 20 minutes breaking that down now now, Dan um, you know, what, just, let's go back to the word you just used I, I, I'm not aware of it <laughs> and then D D Spud just completely lost it because he realised he'd said it incorrectly and he started sweating <laughs> and from that moment on with, with, with the old Foss he he learnt that he had to say everything absolutely yes. perfect, otherwise you're going to get hammered yeah. for the next and hour by saying... That'd muck around with yeah. his head too, because <laughs> he more, knew yeah. he couldn't talk. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And he said to me one day, we were leaving the, the box, and he said, oh, I can't, I, Sam, I just can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I said, what do you mean, Spud? He said, I can't. He's just got in my head. I can't. <laughs> and I said, Spud, the one thing you've got to understand about the force, and we all know and love him, but Gaz, you and I have done a lot of work with him. He only ever takes the piss That's out right. of people he loves. Yeah, true. If he doesn't like you, he yeah. will give you nothing. Yeah. But if he starts taking the piss out of you, Sam, it means he genuinely is fond of you. And he took an enormous <laughs> amount of piss out of Spud. <laughs> <laughs>